The operatives of the IGP Special Task Force on Petroleum and Illegal Bunkering have uncovered an illegal petroleum refinery in Patakot. Reverse State uh, Force Public Relations Officer Olumi Uadejobi described the findings as a significant breakthrough in the continuous fight against oil theft, illegal bunkering and economic sabotage. Adejobi said the operation had led to the arrest of four suspects and the recovery of 40,000 litres of petroleum products stored in 67 white storage tanks. The force PRO added that the Inspector General of Police, Kayo Diegbetokun, has re-emphasised the commitment of the force to tackling every form of crime, criminality and corruption extending to those involved in this economic sabotage. IGP Special Task Force on Petroleum and Illegal Bond Grade operatives uh, bust illegal petroleum refinery arrest four suspects. As IGP vehicles fight against economic saboteurs, the operatives of the Special General Police Special Task Force on Petroleum and Illegal Bond Grade have once again made a significant breakthrough in the continuous fight against oil theft illegal bunkering and economic sabotage. This milestone achievement was marked after the operatives, in collaboration with the Department of Operations, River State Police Command, on 12th September 2024, made discovery of a storage facility in Trans Amadi, Poracot, River State, used in dealing and processing illegal, illegally acquired oil. This operation had led to the arrest of four suspects, namely Emmanuel Umwachi, male 58 years, Adamu Bala, male 35 years, Nora Musa, male 22 years, Bashir Abubakar, male 28 years, and the recovery of 40,000 liters of petroleum products stored in 67 wise story tanks. The team, however, destroyed the site and recovered the equipment and machines used in committing these crimes. The Inspector General of Police of the Federal Republic of Nigeria, Egypt Lulukayole, at the Olympic of Kompiedi, NPM has re-emphasized the commitment of the force to tackle every form of crime criminality and corruption, extending to those involved in this economic sabotage. The force remains unyielding and will continue to bring these perpetrators to book. Thank you and God bless you. Staying in River State, uh, where the Minister of Federal Capital Territory, Nyeson Wiki, uh, solidified his position in the People's Democratic Party leadership crisis as the National Working Committee endorsed the River State Congresses. WK's loyalists within the PDP and WC not only secured the approval, but also postponed the National Executive Committee meeting, originally set for September 26 to October 24, which could have overturned the decision. The PDP and WC, led by acting National Chairman Umar Damagum, made this decision during a meeting at the party's national headquarters, Wadata Plaza, in Abuja. The NWC meeting had been delayed for the past three weeks amid rising tension within the party, especially between former River State Governor Wiki and the PDP Governors Forum over the status of River State Party Congresses. Now, joining us to discuss this is a political analyst, Andy Akpotiv, and he will be helping us to um, dissect this better. Thank you so much, uh, Mr. Akpotiv, for joining us. Thank you so much for having me. Good evening. So, um, how does the decision of the PDP's National Working Committee to give you some BK more control um, affect the international or the internal governance structure of the party? Absolutely. Um, it is, um, I want to borrow the words of the one we like to call the Godo Migodo of Edo State politics. Indeed, it is shameful and it is lugubrious. Uh, how that, for the first time, I think, and 
um, I'd like that you correct me if I'm wrong. We are seeing how that uh, the governor of a state that um, is a part of a political party um, has totally no control over the infrastructure or over what you call the structures of the states. Um, it, it speaks to the fact that the PDP as a political party is no longer interested in following after her protocols, following after the dictates of her constitution, following after, you know, the things that had been established as what was, what was the standard even before now. How is it that a governor is sitting and if you may, we see here that is a faction of the management of PDP, quote and unquote, that have endorsed this. That is a faction, right? So we are waiting to see that indeed this is bigger than the faction. That is the management, the entirety of the management of PDP that gave this authority to Wiki as against giving the authority to the man who is representing their political party as a governor in uh, in river states right so for for me as a person as a political watch as someone who has been actively involved in this political space for at least the last 15 to 20 years these are very strange times in nigerian politics very strange times i must i must confess how that a governor has no say Do you, if you if you had noticed you know fubara had said once upon a time Oh, he said to his supporters, don't worry. Um, they, are going to, they are going to change whatever it is that they have said that they are going to do. Don't worry, let's trash it. Nothing is going to come out of it. But Wiki keeps getting his way. Wiki, the former governor, keeps getting his way with the political party PDP. Even though he is representing APC in an APC government. Mark my word, he's representing APC in an APC government. You are giving him the infrastructure. You are giving him the total control of the structure of his state. Indeed, it represents very strange times in Nigerian politics. So don't you think um, this would actually, um, of course, um, cause something negative or pr bring about negative consequences uh, for the party in upcoming le uh, elections, both at the state and at the national level, because this is some, one man that has been accused of anti-party activities, and just as you've said, working for the other party, and we have an NWC uh, that seems to be supporting him. Yeah, most definitely, uh, because um, politics is essentially about, and, and I have defined structure several, uh, uh, those who know Andy Akpatibe understand that, structure in the context of Nigerian politics is the amount of money you have that you can use to win votes and the amount of violence that you can deploy on election day. Those are the two things that equal structure. So in the minds of the administrators of PDP, mark my use of that word, I don't want to say the next because there are still a few people there who are not representing what the party actually has said should be. How do you have somebody who is seen acting capacity and you have not addressed that issue? How is Damagun still the chairman of PDP? It beats me hollow. And I do not understand why those who are in the, you know, who are the embodiment of PDP, as it were, who once upon a time were people who you can regard as people big enough to be bigger than even the BOT, and they are still in the party and they are allowing these things to happen. Now, it is as a result of this and the fact that Damago understands that politics essentially, winning structure is about, or structure in politics is about the amount of money you have and the amount of violence you can deploy. So you see that they are still throwing their weight behind Wiki. I have said consistently, you know, on air, on radio and on TV to say, what the governor must do now is that he must begin to show to everybody that he's in charge. He has not asserted himself as a governor in River State. So do you wonder why the management of PDP still keeps giving, you know, all of the nine cities that they're that supposed to be doing 
So we can, do you wonder? He has to not start asserting himself. He has to prove himself as one who is strong enough to be able to wield the kind of control that we can wielded when he was sitting in that same position. We have said consistently that until you are able to do this, you will just be crying because they understand who can win elections for them the Nigeria way. The Nigeria way, the only person who can win elections uh, is a person who is able to, you know, throw a lot of money to ensure that whatever he says is what becomes. Deploy a lot of people into, you know, the different political uh, systems to ensure that whatever he wants is whatever, he, whatever becomes. And so, uh, Mr. PK has continued to... Yeah, so, Mr. Akwatiwe, basically what you're saying is that um, the leadership of the party in some way are cowards and lack the integrity uh, to actually drive um, the uh, plans and agenda uh, of the party. Is that what you mean? I, I, may not say, I may not say that exactly, but how, how do you explain that Wiki keeps getting his, 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 uh, his way in this political equation? In the first instance, the former governor of River State, His Excellency Ezebu Wiki, is no longer the governor of River State. And that's what Nigerians do not understand. He's no longer the governor of River State. He is a minister in the APC government. Okay. A minister in the APC government. How do you, how, why do you think that he keeps getting his way in PDP? One of two things would have happened. It's either that the management of PDP, as it were, has come to accept that PDP is dead and gone. Hmm. That's the first thing. PDP is dead and completely gone. So they want to collapse the PDP into the APC infrastructure. All that, they believe that WK indeed is PDP. Otherwise, how do you do this thing to a sitting governor? One who is, represent, who is supposed to be representing your political party in River State. You are taking the infrastructure, you are taking the structure, you are taking everything away from him to give to somebody who is not the current or the sitting governor. Indeed, there's no better way to define preposterous. There's no way, better way to define what is not the standard than what has just been done, you know, by the management of PDP. Uh, all right. And one would have thought that the PDP governors would be able to put their weight against him, but then we don't see that playing out. Uh, Mr. Andy Apo TV, it was nice talking to you. Thank you. Thank you so much for having me. In the meantime, the Kogi State Chapter of the People's Democratic Party has suspended a former senator from the state, Dino Milaye. From the party, Milaye was suspended by the PDP Exco in Ayeto Road, Bede Ward 1, following its refusal to honor a summon. The Ward Exco explained that Milaye was suspended for anti party activities and alleged misconduct. The resolution to suspend the former Kogi West senator was taken by the Ward Party Executive Committee during a meeting in Ayeto Road, Ward 1 on Friday to review the report of the disciplinary committee set up to investigate alleged anti-party activities against him. It was signed by the ward chairman, Abayomi Osamika, and ward secretary, Yotsin Dayo. And ahead of the House of Representatives by election in Kaduna State, northwest Nigeria, some members of the All Progressives Congress have called on political parties in the state to put an end to the marginalization of residents of Kajuru by zoning the Chikun Kajuru federal constituency seat to the area. They say this will affect fairness, equity and justice for the people of Kajuru and bring an end to over two decades of marginalization. Our correspondent, Edong Joseph completes the reports. We this day to inspire and guide all our counsels and actions. Almost two months after the demise of Ekene Adams, a federal lawmaker representing Chikum, Kajuru Federal Constituency of Kaduna State, the by-election to fill the vacant slot is yet to be conducted. While Nigeria's electoral body has informed citizens that plans have been concluded to conduct the poll, some think the position should be zoned to other areas that have not had representation outside Chikum, where the late lawmaker hails from. Kajuru started for only four years. After that four years, Chikum collects the seats for 22 to 23 years. Therefore, I think even if uh, an issue of sharing formula 
we should be allowed at least this time around to be given if it's just eight years. I am 100% in support, not satisfied, in support of zoning this seat to Kajuru. Because this is over 21 years, Chukun have been joined the, the seat. We also have capable sons and daughters who can actually represent us. That is why we are asking, we are pleading for them to consider us. With the date for the state's local government election also drawing closer, party faithful from the All Progressives Congress have also called on citizens to come out in mass to participate in the poll. To also appeal to them to come out in mass and vote from the world level and also the local government level so that we can produce councillors from the various 10 wards and also produce chairman at the local government level. The APC in the state says that their demand will bring about justice, fairness and equity, and also a sense of belonging to aggrieved citizens from the marginalized area. Still talking politics, a pro-democracy group in Edo State has warned politicians participating in the upcoming Edo State governorship election to shun campaigns promoting violence and focus on issues they intend to address when elected into office. The group, while expressing concerns over recent events in the state leading to the governorship poll, said the attitude of politicians in the state is capable of setting the state on fire. Desperate politicians to desist forthwith from fanning the embers and beating the tom tom of war as we approach the election dates. They should take Complicence of the fact that power is transient, ephemeral and, and transitory. Nothing, nothing, I say nothing, lasts. We go on a very short break and when we return, we'll talk about Bono floods even with the National Security Advisor set to have visits and sympathized with residents there. We'll bring you updates after this timeout. Now to updates on the mid-degree floods, the National Security Advisor Nuhu Ribadu has visited Borno State to sympathize with the people and government of the state over the recent flood incidents that led into loss of lives and rendered many homeless. While addressing the people of Borno State, Ribadu assured them of President Bola Tenubu's continued support. Earlier, the National Emergency Management Agency said that the widely reported flooding in Meduguri is beginning to recede and normalcy is returning to the metropolis. In the meantime, the North East Development Commission has unveiled plans to reconstruct a loud dam and repair numerous bridges across the North East states, which were severely damaged by recent flooding. The managing director of the NEDC, Mohamed al Kali, made this done in Meduguri while releasing grains and other items to victims of the flood. New Central Sumaru Kurawa completes the reports. Thousands of houses and other infrastructures are still submerged in Meduguri, the Borno state capital. With more than a million persons affected, victims of the flood take refuge at government camps or houses of loved ones. The collapse of the Alo Dam which has been allegedly filled to capacity for the past one week, is said to be the cause of the flood in Meiduguri. The long term is how to control the, the occurrence of such things in the future. Uh, Alo Dam, we now said it uh, got annoyed and <laughs> angry and for uh, 30 years ago, and it did it again. And what happened the two days ago is time is true, or what happened in 30 years ago? So we need to work to stop it from happening, or if it happens again in the future, let it be one, not, uh, not three. So, but that is going to be a very huge collaboration between the federal government, the state government, and all other agencies of our government, or uh, donor agencies which we are going to pursue, so that uh, we do the needful. The project aims to restore vital infrastructure, ensuring better resilience against future natural disasters. We are going to release about 200,000 bags of rice to the whole of Gnosis, 200,000 bags of rice. We're going to also release 150,000 cartons of macaroni or spaghetti. And we're going to release 50,000 cartons of vegetable oil. When you multiply by five, you have about 250,000 
uh, gallons of, of, of bleach oil. We're also going to release blankets, about 200,000. We're going to also release a, a, a mats, branded mats, about 200,000. And we're also going to release about 50,000 pieces of shutdown for the men, because like those who are affected by this floor to bridge collapse, I mean, they leave their houses without taking any of their wares. We're also going to release our 50,000 pieces of, uh, uh, for the women, another piece, uh, 50,000 pieces so that they can be able to uh, recoup. Uh, children wears, we have about 65,000 pieces. The relief effort aims to alleviate food shortages in the region, which has been struggling with extensive damage from the flood disaster. In my degree for News Central, Omori Krawa. And our correspondent, Omaru Kurawa, joins us now for more updates. Omaru, uh, good evening to you and well done on uh, the coverage of this uh, particular, particular um, disaster as witnessed um, in Meduguri. So tell us, um, what is the situation with the floods now and the set to be, uh, of course, the ongoing search and rescue operation um, in the States? Yes. Um the ongoing search and rescue is still ongoing, and uh, a lot of people have been um, rescued uh, by the uh, National Emergency Management Agency, the Nigerian Army, the police and other officers and men of the armed forces, including the civilian JTF and other community uh, volunteers in, in, in Meduguri, the Borno State capital. However, one major challenge that uh, uh, it seems to be uh, the, the, the big talk of the town is that um, even community members who are residing in nearby communities that are not affected by the flood troop into um, camps where uh, victims of the flood are being, um, are being uh, are staying there. So it's uh, becoming a very serious uh, problem. That's what the National Emergency Management Agency Zonal Coordinator told us earlier, that uh, it, the, the issue of overcrowd is uh, is becoming a major problem. The, the, the food uh, there seems to be insufficient food in the in the camp because of the influx of uh, um, community members who are not really affected by the flood, but due to the economic downturn, um, they are they are trooping down into the camps. And of course, houses uh, are still going down. Uh, although um, the government has warned people not to. Um, return to their houses immediately, um, taking into consideration that the flood water is receding. Um, some houses are collapsing, and and uh, people are warned not to um, be in a haste to return to their homes so that it will not collapse on them. So this is uh, basically some of the uh, major situation or happenings. Um, within uh, the state capital so far. And um, good news is coming um, with regard to aid and support to the government because um, uh, Aliko Dangote is, was here recently. Um, uh, he donated two billion naira to, to support uh, families uh, of the uh, flood disaster and other uh, personalities giving support in order to help uh, victims of the insurgency. And uh, and uh, as well as the flood disaster. And the, the state government, uh, to ensure transparency, um, has just uh, um, released uh, account details uh, for support from well-meaning individuals, organizations, or donors. So basically this is uh, the situation in Meduguri right now with regard to the flood so while we continue to record um, these uh, humanitarian gestures uh, for victims in the states, how soon do we expect um, the reconstruction of the allowed dam and the repairs of bridges uh, to actually mitigate the impact um, of the floods? Well, um, first, the government need to actually assess um, the area. And it's worthy to note that uh, the area now uh, is not accessible because um, the bridges linking the Lagos, the, 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 the other parts of the state uh, along the Lagos Street um, is one of the bridges has been affected and thereby uh, motorists are warned not to follow the route. 
So unless um, maybe the government um, uh, work um, uh, finally, nobody can give actual date or time for the reconstruction of the Alo Dam. All right, thank you so much, Mark Rawa, for the updates. We'll continue to um, keep tabs with you to get more details and continue to stay safe. Moving on now, at least 21 people have lost their lives in a motor accident which occurred along the Kaduna-Abuja Highway between the border of Kaduna and Niger States. According to reports, the collision involved a truck and a commercial bus carrying passengers from Abuja and Katsina State to Kano. Officials of the Federal Road Safety Corps in Kaduna State said the accident occurred close to a traffic diversion around Niger State, which forced all vehicles coming from opposite directions to drive on a single lane due to the ongoing reconstruction of the Kaduna Abuja Highway that has taken a long time to complete. Now, the Presidential Compressed Natural Gas Initiative Council has reaffirmed its commitment to alleviating traffic congestions and minimizing the impact of the fuel subsidy in Nigeria. As part of its efforts, the Council is set to distribute 1,000 conversion kits across the country. During a visit to a distribution center in Ogun State, a representative of the Council disclosed that 450 conversion kits had already been given out to states, with an additional 550 awaiting distribution. The representative emphasized the need for Nigerians to embrace the initiative, highlighting its potential to significantly reduce the cost of petrol. The conversion kits are designed to enable vehicles to run on compressed natural gas, a cleaner and more affordable alternative to petrol. Seriously, help in the sense that now four is around a thousand plus now, and CNG is around two ten, two thirty. So if you check, if you check the cost effect, the gross margin between the what's it called, what for is being sold now and the CNG price, it, it will have a lot, a lot of positive impact on everybody. Currently, we are doing cataloging for the one thousand kits and cylinders we intend to distribute across the country: um, Lagos, Ogun State, Kaduna. Abuja and um, Oyo. So, uh, as at this morning, 450 has gone out already to, to Kaduna and Abuja. Then the 550 will be going out today to Lagos, Oyo, and um, Ogo State. We have cylinders. We have 75 water liter cylinders. We have 65 water liter cylinders. We have conversion kits. Four cylinder sequential, six cylinder sequential, four cylinder open loop, and they are going to different. Talking about peace building, peace advocates in Adama State have called for the integration of peace education in schools curriculum, saying it will help address the issue of unrest in the northeastern state. This was during an event organized for experts to brainstorm on finding solutions to religious intolerance and conflicts in the state. They also urged religious leaderships in the region to join the advocacy for peace, saying that they can play fundamental roles in this quest and act as custodians of morality. The government must respond to specific needs of the youths, especially because we normally say the youths are the leaders of the tomorrow. And peace education and advocacy in conflict resolution are necessary for lasting peace. This is what is required all over the world at this present period. It's not only not is that it's first, but in Nigeria, we are at the extreme. People learn the moral way of life from the religious leader, and because of their standing and the respect they own in the community, they are people that are supposed to stand in the gap and tell people how to live a life that goes with the moral standard the way God wants it to be. To health matters now, uh, in a world where women's health is often stigmatized, one hormonal disorder, polycystic ovary syndrome, or PICOS, affects millions and remains shrouded in mystery. From irregular uh, periods to fertility issues, the effects of PCOS can be draining. Zala Zamani 
uh, public health advocate diagnosed with PCOS at 16 is now on a mission to raise awareness, reduce stigma and promote early diagnosis. New Central's Adeshiwo Dushoga reports. Syndrome is a hormonal disorder that affects 5 to 10 percent of women of childbearing age. Women living with PCOS, as it's often called, face a range of physical, emotional and reproductive challenges, which include regular periods, excess hair growth on the face, chest or back, ovarian cyst and sometimes fertility issues. It has a genetic predisposition, but you cannot say this is the exact cause. Okay, can be familial. Familiar means it can run in families. There's a genetic predisposition. You cannot say this is the exact cause for it. There could be associations, you know. When I mean association, oh, family history of polycystic ovarian syndrome, you know, body mass index and things like that, but you cannot say this is what the cause. And there are so many conditions in gynecology that are like that. Zala Zamani, a public health advocate, was first diagnosed with polycystic ovary syndrome at 16. In a recent interview with New Central TV, Zala shared her journey of discovery, the challenges she faces, and her mission to raise awareness about the hormonal disorder. I had lost my period for like um, six months at once, but you know, I was like, I'm 16, I'm not married, um, I'm not having sex yet, so I'm like, yeah, I'll just, I'll just forget about it, right? I went to the hospital. So when I went to the hospital, I was referred to the gynecologist and. Um, so I had some series of tests and follow-ups, and at the end, I got the diagnosis that, oh, yeah, you have PCOS. We do not present with beards, but all of a sudden, I'm growing a beard, and when you're trying to have conversations with people, they get distracted by your beard. It's just a myriad of things popping up over and over again. So these symptoms often lead to feeling of embarrassment, shame, isolation. Uh, then there's a social stigma around fertility issues. Determined to take charge of her health, Zala began researching PCOS and connecting with others who shared her experience. Her passion for public health advocacy led her to start a PCOS support group online where she raises awareness, reduces stigma and promotes early diagnosis. PCOS is also a metabolic issue and a hormonal disorder. So it affects more than just um, fertility. It can lead to diabetes, it can lead to heart disease, and mental health issues if left untreated. So you see, you need more than just a gynecologist to treat your PCOS symptoms. I have had surgery twice um, due to um, living with PCOS. And in all of those surgeries, it, they all started because I woke up one day and I had really terrible periods. Like, the pain was off the roof. It felt like a contraction. With advocacy from individuals like Zala, health professionals and the government are expected to raise more awareness, to create room for early diagnoses, fund more research and reduce stigmatization among women. In Lagos, for News Central, Adisha Waudushoga. Away from that, both Nigeria and Ugandan officials have tasked citizens in the country to take advantage of the newly launched air routes between Etembe in Uganda and Abuja in Nigeria. And this was during the conclusion of the maiden flights, which landed at the Namdi Azikiwe International Airport in Abuja, where senior officials say the flights now create tremendous opportunities, including easing the movement of cargo, creating job opportunities for youths of both countries, and boosting local manufacturing. Amadin Uyi tells us more. It started with a maiden flight by the Ugandan Airlines between the Entebbe International Airport in Uganda to the Namdi Azikiwe International Airport in Nigeria's federal capital territory. While the flight is a direct route from Uganda to Nigeria, officials present say it presents an opportunity to unite both countries, notable powerhouses in Africa. Uh, this journey started long ago, but uh, to God be the glory today, we can see the second leg of this uh, journey. The first one, like you already said, was uh, launched in Lagos last year in October. So we thank God for the two presidents for their unflinching uh, effort at uniting the people of the two countries. They say it represents years of hard work between both governments, 
which will improve business ties between the business communities of both countries, including other benefits. Only three hours, 30 minutes from Uganda to Nigeria. Before, before you travel to Uganda, before you all go to Lagos, from Lagos you connect your flight, maybe to another East Africa country, like Kenya Airways. Then, there will be, you have to do a layover before you now connect your, uh, to Uganda. All that is maybe about 14 hours, but it's not taking only just three hours. It's going to reduce the cost of transport from Entebbe to Abuja, for example, using other airlines. And thirdly, it's going to facilitate the movement of cargo, those ones that can be flown by air from Uganda to Nigeria and from Nigeria to Uganda. Once that happens, the volume of trade will certainly increase. And when the volume of trade increases, who benefits? The people who produce those goods. The people who are providing those services. Their businesses will grow, they will employ more people, and the people employed will have incomes in their pockets. The Ugandan Minister of State for Transport adds that it also creates a platform for integration between Nigeria and Uganda. There are a lot of unique things Uganda has and Nigeria doesn't have, and there are a lot of unique things Nigeria has, Uganda doesn't have. So once we increase our relationship, this bridge which we have built, it is one to maintain our friendship, and the friend is that one we help you to grow. Officials present say both countries can now benefit from the African Continental Free Trade Area Agreement, which seeks to promote a common market for businesses in Africa. In Abuja for News Central, I am Amadin Uyi. The news continues in Central Africa, where a military court hearing in the Democratic Republic of Congo began on Friday with the expectation of delivering a verdict about what the army allege, alleged was a coup attempt with 50 defendants, three of whom are Americans, facing the death penalty. The 50 people on trial were seated on rows of plastic chairs under a large tent for the hearing in the grounds of a military prison in the capital, Kinshasa. Recall that the home of Vital Kamere, the current president of the National Assembly, was stormed by a group of several dozen armed men in the early hours of May 19, which is when the claimed coup attempt took place. Two policemen guarding him were killed. Let's now tell you that President Ramaphosa has signed a disputed education bill into law but delayed the implementation of two clauses that had threatened to fracture South Africa's nearly three-month-old unity government. In a speech ahead of a signing ceremony in Pretoria, Ramaphosa said the implementation of the signing should start immediately. So, implementation on signing should start immediately. However, I have said as president, I am willing to allow those who do believe that a solution will be found to the two clauses that they believe they have solutions for, to give them the opportunity. So I've decided to delay the implementation for clauses four and five of the bill by a period of three months. This will give the parties time to deliberate on these issues and make proposals on how the different views may be accommodated. Should the parties not be able to agree, I want to make this clear, should the parties not be able to agree on an approach, then we will proceed with the full implementation of all the parts of the bill. Away from that, the World Health Organization has, for the first time, pre-qualified an Mpox vaccine. The announcement came on the heels of the arrival of the first MVABN vaccines to the Democratic Republic of Congo, the epicenter of the epidemic. DRC has recorded nearly 22,000 cases and 716 deaths linked to the virus since January. 
So far, some 200,000 vaccine doses have been delivered to the DRC by the European Union, along with about 50,000 from the United States. On its ex-handle on Friday, the body said the development is expected to speed up access to the jabs to fight an epidemic ravaging Africa. From other continents, we tell you that Russia's central bank has raised interest rates to 19% as it warns inflation is running too high and it needs to cool the economy. The CBN governor, Elvira Nubilina, says that inflationary pressures have not abated, adding that inflation remains above the level required to return to target next year. According to the country's statistics agency, inflation was running at an annual rate of 9.05% in August. The hike comes as Russia has faced economic headaches since launching its February 2022 Ukraine offensive. Добрый день. Сегодня мы приняли решение повысить ключевую ставку до 19% годовых. Рост кредитования несколько замедлился, прежде всего за счет розничного сегмента. Однако инфляционное давление не ослабевает. Устойчивая инфляция остается выше той, которая требуется для возвращения к цели в следующем году. Сегодняшнее решение усилит импульс к снижению инфляции со стороны денежно-кредитной политики. Мы допускаем, что потребуется дальнейшее повышение ключевой ставки на ближайшем заседании. In business, the music industry is a vibrant and constantly evolving landscape where artistic expression intersects with commercial realities. In the digital era, the business of music making has become increasingly complex, presenting both new opportunities and challenges for industry stakeholders. To thrive in this dynamic environment, artists and professionals must stay apprised of the latest trends, technologies and strategies shaping the industry. On the Business Edge program, Ife Omorubi, a seasoned talent manager, shared his insights on the key industry trends he foresees will define the future of the music industry in Nigeria. Technology has affected the way music is created. Technology has affected the way music is consumed. Uh, and of course, once you talk about creation and consumption, then in between there's monetization. Uh, technology has enabled, you know, a lot of platforms. This time, uh, this time, say 20 years ago, uh, if, if someone were to break down the process of making money from music, the options that it, if, if you get it, if you got into the music industry two years ago, uh, it 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 will be totally you'll be totally amazed as you know how how different you know the dynamics are. So technology has played a, a huge role. Uh, and there are also some degree of uh, uh, growth that we've, uh, we've, we've achieved based on, on the, the, some degree of cultural renaissance uh, Nigerians have. In sports, star girl Idubamo Begi pulled all the stops on the continent to power Nigeria to the final of the 2024 FIBA Under-18 Women's Afro Basket on Friday in South Africa. The irrepressible ball handler scored a game high of 23 points to lead the Junior Tigers to a 71-67 victory over their Ugandan opponents in the last semi-final. The Nigerian ladies led in all the first three quarters of the match while the Ugandans' late rally lead, 13-10, in the final period was not enough. The victory into the final of the South African competition comes with a FIBA Under-19 Women's World Cup ticket in Switzerland. Nigeria will now play fellow World Cup ticket holders Mali in Saturday's final to decide the eventual champions of the 2024 Under-18 Afro Baskets. Also, Confederation of African Football has unveiled the cities that will stage the 2025 African Cup of Nations in Morocco. The North African country was given the nod to host the biennial tournament after original host Guinea was stripped. The continent football apex body on Friday afternoon listed six cities including Casablanca, Fez, Marrakesh, Tengiar, Rabat and Agadir. 
Due to the emergence of the 32 club format of the FIFA Club World Cup, the biennial competition was moved to December, January 2026. And that's all at this hour, but before we go, we look at our top stories again. Nigeria Police Task Force team has bust illegal refinery in River State. Military courts due to deliver a verdict on DR Congo coup trial. We also told you that WHO has approved first jab of Mpox vaccine. Don't forget to send your eyewitness reports to the WhatsApp number and email on your screen. While you do that, follow us on social media. We are at News Central TV. You can also watch us live on DSTV channel 422, Star Times channel 274, Avo TV and YouTube. Many thanks for watching. I am Likon Onobanjo.